plan is likely to face big opposition among some European member states and industries. In Poland, EU's biggest polluter, its all-important coal industry would be hobbled by new emissions standards. Car makers in Germany would be forced to rein in their emissions by more than they've already committed to. Shipping crucial to Denmark's economy would face new fines for polluting. Joining us now from Denmark is the da Danish Climate and Energy Minister, Dan Jorgensen. Thanks so much for your time today. Sure. You're welcome. So this plan is likely to face some really tough haggling among the 27 EU member states. How confident are you that it can pass in its current form? Well, we have already agreed on the target and we've actually made it legally binding. So really, this is not a discussion on whether we will reach the 55 percent reduction in 2030. That we have to do. The discussion is now, how do we do it? Obviously, I hope that we will do it in a way that's cost efficient in a way that actually strengthens our competitiveness and creates jobs instead of the opposite. And I feel pretty confident that that, that is possible. I definitely support the different proposals put forward today by the European Commission. I think they are progressive and I think they are wise. And so now you're pivoting to how to do it. So if you look at, you know, for emissions in sectors like transportation, residential, commercial building, a big barrier there is that these cannot be changed on a dime let's say making those 2030 targets a very tough reach, right? Well, it is going to be difficult. On the other hand, a country like my own has already for decades shown that you can make a green transformation in a way that's actually beneficial for your economy. So for instance, using more renewables, if we look at the offshore wind, for instance, that used to be a very expensive way of creating energy. Today, it competes with coal and nuclear power almost everywhere on the planet. So for the Commission today to propose that we have a much higher target, binding target on renewable energy is, I think, a very good way to go about it. Yeah, but there are lots of questions on whether this is, look, we all, we all want to clean up the environment. That's a given. But, but this is a lot all at once, some would say, you know, especially for business. Costs are huge, including including a tax on steel and aluminum imports uh, with nations that have less stringent rules. Plus, we are in the middle of a pandemic and uh, we've got global economies dealing with that. Is this too costly all at once and how do you offset that? Well, first of all, think about the alternative. If we don't do anything to save our climate, the costs for all of us will be much higher. Having said that, if we just look at the investments that we need here, yes, they are big but it is investments and it will make our societies better. My own country, we've decided to reduce not by 55%, which is the target of the EU, but by 70%. And we don't plan on doing this in a way that will cost us jobs and competitiveness. Actually, we plan on doing it in a way that will do the opposite. What about the prospect of possibly hurting trade relationships by punishing other countries for having softer environmental rules? How concerned are you maybe about hurting trade relationships with Russia, China, even the United States? Well, I am concerned about that, obviously, because free trade globally is a good thing. On the other hand, we need to find a way of solving the problem that if a country or a group of countries like the EU uh, regulates its industry and thereby increases the cost of production, that the production then just moves to other parts of the world. I mean, that wouldn't be fair and it definitely wouldn't help the climate. So what we're proposing now is to find a way to say, OK, if you're producing cement or steel or concrete and you uh, are put in a situation where your expenses increase, then to make sure that you're not outcompeted by, for instance, Chinese industry that doesn't have the same expenses, we put a tax on the projects from China, for instance. I think it's actually a pretty fair idea. Now, how we then do it in praxis uh, to keep it uh, into the into line of the WTO rules, uh, that is going to be difficult. What's your message to critics who say the targets as they are right now, that this just can't be done? Well, read the science reports from the International Climate Panel. Uh, they will tell you that if we don't do anything, then we will all and by that I mean all countries in the world spend a lot more money on adapting to climate change in the future. Also, look at the International Energy Agency. They've just put forward a roadmap to show us that these transformations can actually be done and they can be done in a way that will be a growth strategy 
as opposed to a strategy that will hurt our competitiveness. Okay, Dan Jorgensen, grateful for your time today. Thank you. You're welcome.